So what did we discuss uh, yesterday? We continue with the play Mother's Day, right? And uh, yesterday we had read how Mrs. Pearson and Mrs. Fitzgerald, they have exchanged their personalities because Mrs. Fitzgerald, she has uh, learned magic from the East where she had stayed with her husband. And uh, the beginning of the play, we saw that how she had spread out the cards and she was telling the fortune. She also knew some magic where they could exchange their personalities, right? And uh, now she has done that. And so Mrs. Pearson is Mrs. Fitzgerald, the personality of Mrs. Fitzgerald. And she's giving a very rough treatment to the family members. And uh, when the daughter, that is Doris Pearson, she comes back from work and Doris immediately wants that, uh, you know, like what her yellow dress should be ironed. She wants her tea. And she's very surprised when her mother replies very rudely, right? So her mother says, I have not made any and you can have yours wherever you want to. And she says, I don't want to iron your silk dress, right? And especially if she's going out with Charlie Spence, she does not like that person. And Doris is very surprised. And uh, she's uh, saying that uh, you can't, uh, how can you be so rude with me? And why you haven't got... Uh, the tea ready, right? And we are there coming back from work tired uh, and uh, we deserve some kind of uh, what respect and a better treatment. But of course, mother is not at all, uh, you can say changed with all that. And uh, she just carries on with her very strict and rude attitude, okay? Then next who comes? Cyril Pearson comes. Who is Cyril? He is the son. And what is common between both Doris and Cyril? They both are spoiled and pampered. They're rude. They don't treat their mother with respect. Okay. So Cyril also, he comes there and he says that, have you got my clothes ready? You said that you would be mending the, the clothes, right? And uh, she said, I, I do not feel like doing anything. Okay. And uh, right, so she says that uh, even I have a right to, you know, say that I don't want to do this. So because uh, at home, you never do anything. And at work, when you don't feel like doing anything, what do you have? You have your union, right? They speak up for you. They bring to the notice of the authorities the problems that you have. So I've also decided that I'm going to work like as many hours as you do. After that, I am not going to do any extra work. And so she has been very, very strict, right? Towards both her children, Doris and Cyril. Is this clear up till here? Anybody, any doubts, right? So now why is this change happening? Why is it there is such a turmoil in the family? It is because of the exchange of the personalities. Otherwise, Mrs. Pearson, what kind of a lady is she? Yes, Mrs. Pearson is someone very humble, very polite, and she's always there concerned and working for the benefit of her family. Mrs. Fitzgerald is very bold. She is quite daring and strong. And she does not uh, listen to anybody unnecessarily. So there's an exchange of personality. Mrs. Pearson is now whom? Mrs. Fitzgerald, okay? And vice versa, the other way. So both the children, they are in for a big shock. They're uh, like very surprised here that what is happening here? Changes have happened and they're noticing the change, okay? So it's not a nice thing here. You come back home and uh, you find, oh my God, so many changes at home. So can we continue reading? Yes. Harleen, are you looking at the screen? Vanya, Ramnik, Gurkirat, all of you? Are you? Yes. Right. So who is there now entering? Doris. Enters, left. She is in the process of dressing and is now wearing a wrap. She looks pale and red eye. It seems she's been crying. Why has she been crying? Because mother has been rude, right? Mother has been quite uh, strict. She's not listening to her. And uh, yes, she's refusing to do anything for her daughter. 
Mrs. Pearson, you look terrible. I wouldn't wear that face even for Charlie Spence. So who's Charlie Spence? Is her friend, a boyfriend. She's going to go out with him. And uh, mother does not like it. She's never said that before, but she's saying it today. That uh, right. Uh, and uh, she has not ironed her yellow dress. Doris moving above the table angrily. Oh, shut up about Charlie Spence. So look, look how she's talking to her mother. And anyhow, I'm not ready yet, just dressing. And if I do look terrible, it's your fault. You made me cry. So she's very angry. She said, I'm, I'm not dressed up yet. I'm not ready to go out. And if I'm looking very terrible, it is because you made me cry. Cyril, why? What did she do? Who is Cyril? Cyril is the son. Who is Doris? Doris is the daughter. Never you mind. So don't bother. Don't mind what did she do to me and what did she say to me? Mrs. Pearson, rising and preparing to move to the kitchen. Have we any stout left? A drink? Right? So another shock for them. First they've seen their mother. Right? What? With the cards and smoking. And now with this stout. I, I can't remember. Bottle or two? Cyril is telling her. I think, but you don't want stout now. I do. What for? To drink, you clot. So she's very angry. Of Obviously, I need it for drinking. What else do you think? Mrs. Pearson exits right. Instantly, Cyril and Doris are in a huddle, close together at left center, rapidly whispering. So both the brother and sister, they're coming together. Hey, kya ho gaya, mommy ko? What is it? Why is she behaving like this? So both of them are there discussing, right? That, uh, what's wrong with her? Has she been like that with you too? Yes, no tea ready, couldn't care less. Well, I'm glad it's both of us. I thought I'd done something wrong. Thank God. I thought okay, I'm the only one who's getting this kind of treatment. So did I. But it's her, of course. She was smoking and playing cards when I came in. I couldn't believe my eyes. So they were shocked. What did uh, Cyril notice? Uh, Doris noticed, sorry, when she came in, that mother was smoking, mother was playing cards. They've never seen mother so relaxed. Poor thing has always been working for them, taking care of them. And uh, they have never seen her resting and relaxing. I asked her if she was feeling off color and she said she wasn't. That, are you okay? Is your health okay? She said, no, I'm fine. Well, she's suddenly all different. And that's what made me cry. It wasn't what she said, but the way she said it and the way she looked. So they've noticed a change, but they're not able to pinpoint. Obviously, they can't understand what the change has happened. But how have they noticed a change? They have they noticed a change in mother's behavior, the tone of her voice, the way she's speaking, right? So they have noticed that. And she's saying it is not what she said, you know, like it's how she said it, the way she said it, it was so different. And the way she's looking, you know, like, right? She's not looking the way she does every day. There's something different about her. Haven't noticed that. She looks just the same to me. She doesn't to me. She's different. Do you think she could have hit her head or something, you know? And uh, got, what is it, you know? Like she's thinking, like afterwards, she must have fallen down, hit her head. There's a change in the behavior. Do you mean she's barmy? No, you fat head. You know, concussion, she might have. Do you think she's on crazy? No, she might have hit her head, you know? And what happens? Like, of course, her behavior might have changed. Maybe she's forgotten something. There's something wrong with that. So that's why. No, you fat head. You know, concussion, she might have. Sounds far-fetched. You know, it's not possible. Well, she is far-fetched, if you ask me. Well, she is very different today. She suddenly begins to giggle. All of a sudden, Doris, who was in tears and crying and was in a very bad mood, now she's laughing. Now then, what is it? If she's going to be like this when dad comes home, she giggles again. When daddy comes home, then let's see what is going to happen. Cyril, 
beginning to guffo. He's laughing loudly. I'm staying in for that. Two front dress circles for the first house. He's saying, I'm going to stay at home and I'm going to take the front seats and see what is going to happen. Let's see how she's going to behave with father. Mrs. Pearson enters right, carrying a bottle of stout and a half filled glass. So this is something else they've noticed about the mother. She's drinking. Cyril and Doris try to stop the guffawing and giggling, but they're not quick enough. They were going to stop, but uh, mommy could hear them. Okay. Mrs. Pearson regards them with contempt. You two are always talking about being grown up. Why don't you both try for once to be your age? She moves to the city and sits. So she says, you people are always talking about a big way grown up. So why don't you behave like adults? Why are you laughing like kids? Can't we laugh now? Cyril says, oh, we can't laugh even. Yes, if it's funny, go on, tell me, make me laugh. I could do with it, right? So she says that if it's funny, tell me, I, I could also laugh, right? Okay, share your joke with me. You know, you never understand our jokes, mum. So, of course, you know, like you all days, there you think that right parents can't understand your jokes. I was yawning at your jokes before you were born, Doris. So she says, I'm already bored of your jokes. I've heard them. Doris almost tearful again. She can't stand a mother to be rude like that. She's so sensitive or maybe pampered. What's making you talk like this? What have we done? Why are you so rude? Why are you talking like this? Nothing, but come in, ask for something, go out again, then come back and there's nowhere else to go. So she's telling the routine. Nothing. This is what you do. You come in, you come back home, ask for something, give me my yellow dress, give me my clothes, repair this, cook this. Then you go out again and then you're back home again when you have nowhere else to go. Look, if you won't get tea ready, then I'll find something to eat myself. So if you can't get tea ready, I'm going to find something for myself. Why not? Help yourself. She takes a sip of stout. Go, make something for yourself. Cyril turning on his way to the kitchen. Mind you, I think it's a bit thick. I've been working all day, right? Just to be careful about this. I have been working all day and this is not at all acceptable. Your behavior, the, what you are doing, okay? Same here, eight hour day. So if you're working for eight hours, even I am going to work for eight hours. Do you think mothers work for eight hours? Is it possible? So by now, I think so if they wake up, you know, like uh, so early, half the day is over, right? So if mothers stop working by two o'clock, uh, you know, right in the afternoon, then how are you going to manage uh, the rest of the days? So right, yeah, mothers, they work much more than that. It's not eight hours. So they are on call 24-7. So she says, yeah, just like you people are there working for eight hours a day, even I am going to do the same thing. Okay, right. Yes, eight hour day. And don't forget it. I've done my eight hours. That's different. Of course it is. It was. Now it isn't. 40 hour week for all now. Just watch it at the weekend when I have my two days off. She says, it's the same. Hai. Tum log eight hours kaam kare, man, I'm going to work eight hours, right? So you work 40 hours a week. I'm also going to work 40 hours a week. Okay. And then in the weekends, when you people are at home, even I'm going to be at home as always, and I'm going to rest. I'm not going to work. Let's see what you people are going to do about it. Doris and Cyril exchanged alarm glasses, glances. They're very surprised. Then they stare at Mrs. Pearson, who returns the look calmly. Cyril must grab something to eat. Looks as if I need to keep my strength up. So let me get something to eat. It seems this is not going to be an easy day. It's going to be a hard day. It's going to be quite tough for all of us. Okay, so I need to get something to eat. Doris moving to the city anxiously. So Doris, is, she seems to be a little sensitive and she's the one who's really uh, more upset because of mother's behavior. Mommy, you don't mean you're not going to do 
anything on Saturday and Sunday? So how are we going to survive in the weekend if you are not going to do anything for us? No, I wouldn't go that far airily. Like, of course, with a lot of importance, as she's saying, I might make a bed or two and do a bit of cooking as a favor. Okay, see, I'm doing a lot of work if I'm doing a little bit of cooking, which means, of course, I have to be asked very nicely and thanked for everything and generally made a fuss of. Right. In short, she wants recognition of the work she does for the family. She wants everyone to be thankful for what mother does for them. And the weekends when everyone is at home and she will be working, she would want everyone to realize that, see, even on an off day, I am doing a lot of work. But any of you 40 hour a weekers who expect to be waited on hand and foot on Saturday and Sunday with no thanks for it are in for a nasty disappointment. Might go off for the weekend perhaps. So if you people are not nice, you people don't say thank you and you don't appreciate what I do for you, I might go away for the weekend. And then for two days, you will have to manage on your own, right? So you expect to be waited on hand and foot, ki hum tumhare liye, right? We are there and your beck and call, we should be there for you, available for you all the time. And uh, you people don't do any work and I will be there taking care of you. No, this is not going to happen. And if you people are quite rude, if you people don't listen to me, you don't give me due respect, I might go away, okay? Right, so for the weekend, which is once again, something very surprising, something that mother has not done before. Doris, aghast, surprised, go off for the weekend? Why not? I could do with a change. Stuck here, day after day, week after week. If I don't need a change, who does? Right, so yes, do we ever wonder about this? Yes, yeah, so that mothers also, they need a change. We go to school every day, we're working over there, we get out of the house, right? But uh, what about mothers? They are at home every day, right? So you might be going out with your friends, you're going there. So we that mothers also need a break, right? So they are there doing the work every day, taking care of the home, taking care of the family, make sure everybody is taken care of. And at times mothers put others, uh, you know, needs before their, and uh, they take care of them first, then think about themselves later, isn't it? Right. So, yes. So she said, I also need a break. And if there's anybody who needs a change, I think so right now it is me. But where would you go? Who would you go with? Right. Naturally, you'll be taking us along. Or you'll need us. How are you going to go? You've never gone anywhere on your own. How are you going to go? That's my business. You don't ask me where you should go and who you should go with, do you? So you never ask me. That uh, should I go out with this person or should I go out today or should I stay home today? Doris, that's different. The only difference is that I am a lot older and better able to look after myself. So it is you who should do the asking. Right? Remember, I'm older and you should ask me before you go out that should I go out today? Can I go out with this person? Right. And you are the one who should be asking. I don't have to tell you where I'm going and who I will go with. OK, so mother, yes, a big change in her, a big, uh, you know, shock for the family that how mother is behaving, how mother is there talking to her family members. Did you fall or hit yourself with something? And Doris is still wondering, what has happened to you? Did you hit yourself? You hurt your head? There's something wrong with the, your brain? You know, that is why you are talking like this. No, but I will hit you with something, girl, if you don't stop asking silly questions. So she says, I will hit you with something if you don't stop with your silly questions. Poor girl. Doris stares at her open mouth ready to cry. So she is 
so shocked. No, God, mother, what are you doing? Oh, this is awful. She begins to cry, right? So she's in tears once again. Mrs. Pearson, stop blubbering. Why are you talking all this nonsense, right? You're not a baby. If you're old enough to go out with Charlie Spence, you're old enough to behave properly. Now stop it. So mother is there, very, very surprised. Or rather, yes, uh, she's surprising everyone with her behavior. Okay. Do you think... Uh, this is the right treatment for the family. Yes. Tell me now. Let me see how many of you are listening and awake. So do you think this is the right way Mrs. Pearson is behaving? This was the kind of treatment her family required. Is it? Yes. Or is she being too rude, too strict? Anyone? Yes, she's right in behaving like this. Sometimes you need a, a dose of uh, bitter medicine, is it? So something uh, should happen like this to make uh, people realize that they are being very rude and uh, yeah, behave uh, the way they do and they realize that it is not the right thing. Okay, so right. And uh, everybody's writing, yes, okay, ma'am, that's it. That's all we can say. Is it anything else you'd like to say? Is it correct here? Yeah. Do you think uh, mother needs a change? Do you think she needs a break from all the hard work that she's doing? Is it? Yes. And uh, right, uh, Doris and Cyril are very shocked. They can't put uh, a finger, you know, they just can't understand that why this change has happened okay and uh, they're trying to understand it but they can't really you know find that point where this change in behavior happened is this clear till here yes is it clear any doubts anybody anyone any questions yes what did doris ask her mother to do for her please tell me Yes, it's question answer time now. Let me ask a few questions. What did Doris ask her mother to do? Yes. What does she want? Her yellow silk dress to be ironed. Did mother do that? Did she do that? No. Why she didn't do that? Because she's not Mrs. Pearson, she is Mrs. Fitzgerald, right? And she wanted to teach the family a lesson that why are you taking me for granted? What about Cyril? What about him? How does mother behave with him? Does she keep his things ready? No. Is tea ready for them? No. And... What are the changes in mother's behavior and habits that are noticed? What are the changes that are noticed in mother's behavior? What are the things she has been seen doing that she normally doesn't do? What are the things there that she's doing? Yes, so she was smoking and she's drinking. And when uh, the daughter entered, she had spread the cards on the table and she was playing cards. They've never seen her relaxing or behaving in this way before. Okay, so it did come as a bit of a shock to them. Right, yes. So we will continue reading with the next uh, part, okay, in the next period. Clear?